Peter Millibar, Mayor Peter Millibar, joining us on the show on this Thursday afternoon. Happy Canada Day long weekend, by yeah, the way. It's, it's nice being here on a Thursday with the holiday it tomorrow. It is. Yeah. yeah, thank you for making the change for us. I know mm. normally coming on a Friday. Do you have any big plans this weekend? No, I'm running down to Poco tonight to watch my son's lacrosse game, mm -hmm. and then I'll be back in time for a Canada game mm -hmm. tomorrow and uh, pop out to the airport right after this to greet our uh, friends from Uji that are flying in yep. uh, for a few days. And, uh, yeah, tour them around for the next few days after that. Riverside Park is going to be a, a beehive of activity tomorrow, as it always is, but uh, I hear upwards of 30,000 people. Yeah, uh, you know, if the weather holds, uh, it's supposed to cool off a little bit, I think, by tomorrow, yeah. but, um, you know, we're expecting big crowds, as always. Uh, you know, the uh, Multicultural Society does a great job organizing the food area and the entertainment, mm -hmm. and then, of course, the Arts Council does the art in the park area, and, and uh, then we have the fireworks to finish it all off, so quite a great mm -hmm. night for everybody. And you'll be down there for some of the day, Yeah, of and course. free transit all day long and yes. uh, the buses run until around 11 30 at night so uh, people okay. can still catch the fireworks get over to Thompson Park Mall area and the transit exchange and get back home so yes yeah. and you can pedal bike down there and keep your bikes uh, uh, locked up uh, safely in the tennis courts fundraiser of course for Kissam so if that's uh, an option that you like you can do that as well but yeah. I think the buses are a great option too yeah uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the things going on uh, locally that uh, have been in the current events lately a uh, Stuart Wood of course a big last week for them this week after 109 years, I think yeah, it was. Yeah, it's disappointing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I went there from kindergarten to, to grade 7. Uh, did you? A few of my siblings nice. did, did the same full run. A couple older ones didn't go that same length of time. But, uh, um, yeah, it's uh, it's been a great school for the community. It's it's sad to see it close. But understandable, though, when you look at what a modern school is like. And, and um, you know, as much as I, I guess we want to hang on to our past, sometimes uh, yeah, you have to, you know, move forward with, with modern buildings. So, yeah, um, yeah it's unfortunate. But uh, I think the kids will be well served in Beatty and, and on, the, on the McGill campus as well as uh, the yes. Beatty School of the Arts at the OJP. So the kids here will go up to uh, the current BD location of the arts location on McGill. They will get bussed up on school buses should they choose to go that route. Is that right? That's what it sounds like. I mean, yeah. you know, this is all school district territory. Sure. I, I don't want to muddy the waters more than already. I, I get continually asked by people why I closed uh, Stuart Wood. And I say, it's not me, it's the school district. And, and they have their reasons, and, and that's fair enough. So, um, you know, and it, although I noticed that they changed the name of South Cam, I graduated there. They've changed JP twice now. I, gra I went to school there and mm -hmm. Stuart Wood. So, they, mm -hmm. you know, I'm more prepared paranoid person might think the school district had it in for all my former schools but uh, <laughs> it's just the way of the world right it's, it's and it's 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 got to be a tough job for them to be sure fair. I mean they're very restricted budgets and and they have to do what they can with the funds that they have and, mm -hmm. and still try to provide great education for all our kids and I think they do a great job of that so uh, we'll we'll sit down with the province and we're trying to figure out what uses could go into Stuart Wood uh, um, and where money would come from to make it work and, and try to make it as, as uh, vibrant of a community space as possible so that it's still a, a nice public building and, and provides a lot of life to downtown Calum. Mm -hmm. It's a heritage building, yes? It is a heritage building and it's a beautiful uh, exterior and it's got a lot of challenges inside in terms of modern accessibility and things like that and that's what the school district found as well. So uh, first step is trying to figure out what types of uses would be permitted under the, the terms of the agreement that we even own the building. It has to be for educational purposes mm -hmm. but in 1907 or whenever it was granted to us that was meant something totally different than today mm -hmm. so we need to figure out with the province what does that really mean and then we have to figure out who would be the best use to go in and then after all that we have to figure out who's going to pay for that use and sure. so it's complicated uh, yeah and so it's going to take a little while I, I i think we need to get it right it, it served us well as a building for 109 years if we get it right let's uh let's have it service uh uh, the community for a great many years. If we get it wrong, it's going to be a headache for everybody sure. for, for the time. So uh, I think we need to, to take a you know, walk before we run and make sure we do it right and affordably and, and uh, get the highest and best use possible. Sure. Could it be something like a community centre like Henry Groob became? Or is that... Well, possibly, but again, that's the school district that stepped in and, and did that with Henry Groove for educational mm -hmm. purposes. We've worked with them with other schools that they've closed um, that we didn't have ownership in, and they've been great to work with there. You think of the John Todd Center and the success of the North Shore there, Westside Elementary, we've been able to step in and make that for the cadets and, and other community groups, huge successes there. So we, we've done a good job, I think, working with the school district, but uh, this one we now uh, officially technically own, and we need to figure out how we're going to 
uh, maximize the use to, to benefit downtown and the mm -hmm. community as a whole. Could take a while then. People yeah. need to be yeah. patient in order to make the right decision the first time. That's what I would suggest, That's yes. the key. Yeah. We have about two minutes. Uh, I also want to talk about, of course, tis the season for road construction. <laughs> Let's go to the visual, shall we? Uh, we've been through a little bit already. I know that Notre Dame was being worked on in June. Uh, we are still in June technically, but now we're on to Tranquille. Uh, how long will this one be? How big of a... I know it was a bit of a fuss on Notre Dame. I remember being slowed down a bit, but how will Tronquil go? Uh, Tronquil will be similar. There, there is going to be a section, though, that will be uh, quite significant. We have to replace some uh, underground piping, so uh, that will be a full dig up and, and move things around. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, and, and that's the, the nature of road construction, and, and it happens in all cities. I think people in Camels are getting a little more uh, uh, forgiving of it and understanding of it. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, the, the benefit is we see huge benefits uh, when it's done you look at Columbia Street today and what sure. it looks like with uh, that difference. meridian and the trees the center trees and and it's a beautiful corridor now um, and uh, you think of all the angst and people saying don't do it and things like that when we were when we were talking about putting in those turning lanes so mm -hmm. um, you know bear with us we're working on it uh, they're coming under budget under budget which is uh, great news as well that and never and, happens well you know it ebbs and flows right so they're they're a little bit slower right now in road construction so we're getting some good pricing uh, you know and then a year or two from now it'll, it'll swing the other way so it's nice to to see those savings this year mm -hmm. and and um and hopefully we can get some uh, other projects done next year because of those savings mm -hmm. pacific way of course is another one we have 30 seconds uh, when does that start it hasn't gone out to tender yet or has it Oh, oh, sorry, I was confusing up Tronquil and Pacific Way. Pacific Way is where we're doing the, the pipe work. Um, okay. uh, yeah, Pacific Way is out to tender. We've authorized staff to go ahead if it meets under budget. It sounds like it's about 400000 under nice. budget. Um, Tronquil was under budget as well. And uh, But we can't release the contractor's name quite yet until they finish off all the paperwork, but uh, that should be released pretty quickly here. Okay, fantastic. We're out of time. Great to have you on the show. As always, we got Absolutely. through two topics, just like yeah. we thought we would. And so. Westside Pool is out to tender uh, pretty nice. quick too, so hopefully we'll be started on the roof out there real quick. So. Right, and McDonald yeah. Water Park opens tomorrow. Uh, unofficially. unofficially. Officially next week. Right. Or a week, few trial runs. So we don't, want to, we don't want to have too many disappointed kids if something suddenly needs to get fixed <laughs> on the first day. So uh, Fair yeah. enough. All right, Peter, yeah. thank you for being here. Happy Canada Day to you. Yeah, and you too.